Yeah, yeah, on to the next one. Gotta yeah. buy with me next. Maybe one more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah.
My name is Robert Gustafson. I am the president of Erskine College and Erskine Theological Seminary. I want to welcome you to our virtual tour today. Uh, we'd love to invite you to campus and see the campus face to face and person to person. But today we're going to do that virtually. Just a few things about Erskine College. This is a big decision for you as you think about college and a few things I want you to think about when you think about the campus. One, it's small enough that when you come, you're coming into a family. And what I mean by that is that you're not going to be a number. People are going to know your name. They're going to want to get to know you. They're going to know your family. They're going to know what your strengths and weaknesses are, and they're going to encourage you and challenge you to grow. Two, you come into an academic community where you're going to be challenged academically, and it's going to be in a liberal arts environment. So you may love math, but you, you get a chance to see an English teacher who loves English, an English professor who loves that subject matter, or maybe it's biology or maybe it's sociology. And you're gonna find as you begin to explore where your gifts are, what you enjoy academically, and get a sense of where God may be calling you academically, but not just academically, in the arts. If you love to sing, come be a part of the Coraliers. If you, if you love the arts, the visual arts or the performing arts, this is a place you, you can explore those gifts. Even athletically, we play in the NCAA Division II and a chance to, to hone your skills athletically. But most importantly and foundationally, it's a place where we want you to grow spiritually. This day is for ARP students in, in particular. And we want you to come and be involved and to grow spiritually. Get involved with RUF, Reformed University Fellowship. Get involved in the Bible studies across campus. Learn to lead a Bible study. Learn to share your faith with your fellow classmates because that's foundational in your growth as you prepare to go out into the world. And with all those things together, a nurturing, challenging environment in terms of relationships, an academically rigorous setting, and a place where you can grow spiritually, we want to send you off prepared to be leaders in your family and in your church and in your work as you go out into the world. Thank you for being a part of the day. I hope it's a great day. Welcome, everybody, to the virtual ARP Day. We're really glad you're here to join us. Um, we are out here on the mall actually the front porch of Watkins Student Center. A lot of students come here to sit and enjoy the beautiful scenery, um, do homework, or just relax and hang out with friends. Today we have Clint Davis with us to bring a good word, a devotion. Um, Clint Davis graduated from NC State. He came here to Erskine Theological Seminary um, and studied here. He pastors Chester ARP Church, and he is the current chairman of the Board of Trustees. Let's hear a good word from Clint Davis. Thanks, Hunter. Glad to be here. Look at what a beautiful day out here in front of this beautiful scene at Erskine College. Thank you guys for joining us. I wish you could be here live, but since you can't, we're glad to come to you this way. It is a, a great day to uh, be talking to you about pursuing God's will. That's the subject I've been asked to address, and I look forward to doing that. I think maybe uh, if you're like me, Pursuing God's will, the idea that God has a will for my life can in some ways be incredibly comforting and encouraging that God, the creator of the universe, wants to use me to do his work and has a specific will for my life. In other senses, though, I think it can be somewhat overwhelming. That's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to think about how God could use me. God could want to use me. God could put responsibilities on me to accomplish his work. I think that's very challenging in some cases as well. So when I think about God's will for my life, I've got to first ask the question, and maybe you do as well, and I pray that you will. I've got to first ask the question, what is God's will? God's will is to accomplish his desire, which ultimately is to bring glory to his name in all things. That's what the God of the Bible, that's his will for our lives. That's what he clearly tells us. His desire is to accomplish his will by bringing glory to himself in everything. And so when he wants to use me and he wants to use you, he's going to use us in a way to do just that. Now, I said a moment ago, I think it's somewhat overwhelming. I also think sometimes it's hard to contemplate and hard to think about God's will for my life because it's some 
to a large degree, it's theoretical and theological. I mean, it's way kind of up there in the sky somewhere. When you start thinking about that uh, God has a purpose and a plan and a will for my life, and in some ways it seems incredibly impractical. Uh, I guess in some ways it's very practical, but sometimes for me, I think about it in terms of it being just incredibly impractical. I also think it can be somewhat challenging for me to think about God's will for my life because I think I can sometimes get a fearful. I can become somewhat afraid. And the reason I, I struggle with that, maybe you do as well, is to think about that God has put this pressure, like I feel like there's pressure on me, but also to think about that if God has a specific purpose and plan for my life and a will for me to participate in His will, to bring glory to Himself, how do I know I'm doing it right? How do I know that I'm not, that I'm going to do it just perfectly as He wants me to do? And so that becomes somewhat, it kind of strikes fear because I don't know about you, but I sometimes struggle with the understanding that God is in heaven looking for reasons to get on me, looking for reasons to judge me, looking for reasons to fuss at me. Sometimes I think that. That's not true, but I tend to think that way. And so I can be afraid when I begin to think about who God is and how he has a will for my life. Am I going to do it just the way that he wants it done? And so if you're thinking that way, if you're thinking like me, I want to take a moment during this video to kind of relieve the burden of that to you today. I want to relieve that burden for you today because I want to tell you in a very broad and general sense, really simply, that God's will for your life and God's will for my life is to glorify His name and to enjoy Him forever. Now, you may be familiar. I know that a number of you probably learned the Shorter Catechism growing up. You may be familiar with that first question, what is, God's, what is man's chief end? Man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. And so you are already familiar with that, but let me just lift that burden from you that ultimately God's desire for you and God's desire for me is to glorify Him and enjoy Him forever. So in everything we do, we want to bring glory to God and to enjoy our relationship with Him. It's that simple. Really, it's that simple and therefore very practical. Now, as we talk about glorifying God and enjoying Him forever, doing His will for our lives, there are several things we must do. The first, obviously, is we have to make sure our relationship with God is right. We can't glorify Him, we can't enjoy Him if we don't have a proper relationship with Him. Now, when we talk about getting our relationship with God right, I want to make sure we understand that that begins with understanding how much God loves us. I said before, and you may remember this from the previous segment, that I sometimes question when it comes to God's will for my life, whether or not God's sitting up there waiting for me to make a mistake, whether or not I'm going to do it just perfectly for Him and as if He's looking for a reason to make me suffer if I don't do it just right or make me pay consequences. And I said earlier, that's not right because it is not right. We, are no, we know that the Bible clearly tells us that our God, the God of heaven, the God of all creation loves us more than we would ever begin to imagine, more than we love ourselves. He loves us so much that he sent forth his only son to die for us, to give his own life for us. And so this great God of the Bible loves me. And so he's not sitting up there looking for ways to punish me. He's actually sitting up there looking for ways to to woo me to himself, to make me love him all the more. And so that's a very important point when we think about getting our relationship with God right, because it is only through a relationship with Jesus and, that we can begin to glorify God and even enjoy a relationship with him. Now, what does that look like? Well, it looks like trusting Jesus. It's a, a faith where we place our faith in Jesus. Now, faith's a big word. You've heard it probably many times in your life, especially if you've grown up in a church or maybe an ARP church or a Christian church of some sort. You've heard faith oftentimes used with reference to Jesus. Let me explain it to you a little bit or give you an illustration. You're probably sitting in a chair right now. Now, when you sat down in that chair, you took an act of faith because you believe that that chair was capable of holding you. Now, when we think about faith, we have to think about it in terms of an object. So that chair is the object. You put your trust in that chair and therefore you sat down. When we think about faith with God, we think about faith in Jesus, we're doing the same thing. Jesus is the object of our faith. We trust that he is there and capable of saving us, of preserving us, of keeping us, of holding us close to him, of loving us, of being the one through whom we can have a relationship with God. Now, once we get that right, we have to uh, not only put our faith in him, but we also have to repent. We have to turn and follow him and pursue 
pursue him and to live with him. And there are three Bible verses I want to point us to uh, today uh, as we think about what it means to walk with Jesus and to glorify God and enjoy him forever. The first comes from the book of Matthew, and it's Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and uh, pursue its righteousness, and all everything else will be added unto you. The idea that first and foremost we get our relationship with God right through faith and repentance, and then we turn and we pursue God. We want to live in relationship with Him and do what He says. And then the second Bible verse comes from the book of John, and Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments is what he says right here in the book of John. And so we're thankful that Jesus has given us his commands. And so we're going to walk with him. And then the third is in the book of Micah, where the prophet says that he has told you, O man, what is right. And what does God require of you but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And so the way in which we walk with Jesus and the way in which we live with him is the way we glorify him and enjoy him through faith and repentance and obedience and following after him. Those are the most important things that you can do when it comes to fulfilling God's will for your life. Now, after you get your relationship with God right through faith and repentance and you begin to do justice, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God, you are learning how to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. In order to help us do that, I want to give us three very practical and realistic things that we can do every day to help us do just that, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. The first practical thing I want to leave you with in this video is to respect everyone. And I learned this as a young man, and you probably learned this as well from your parents and from others in the church, that one of the ways we can love our neighbors as ourselves, and one of the ways we honor God is simply by respecting everyone. We understand, or at least I pray that you understand, that the fact that every person is made in the image of God gives inherent dignity and respect to every human being. And as a result of that, they are worthy of our respect. And so one of the ways you can walk with God and do the right things, walk and do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with God is simply by ensuring that you respect everyone around you. Second thing I want to encourage us to do is to um, be loyal to our friends. You know, I think loyalty is one of those things that is often lost in our society today. People, everybody's looking out for themselves. Everybody's trying to get theirs. You know, when I was young and I, I'm 41, and so, you know, I'm just going to say this, I'm old now. And so I remember saying things like when I was your age, probably I was saying, you know, these old people always reminded back when I was a kid. And now I can say that. And back when I was young, loyalty was a major, major thing. We were loyal to our friends. We made sure that we were loyal to one another. But then we started wrestling with this idea of getting minds. Everybody wants to get minds, you know? And so one of the things that you can do to show that you have been transformed by the grace of God and that you love God and you love other people and you're doing justice, loving mercy, walking humbly before your God is by being a loyal friend. And the third thing I want to do is to encourage you to do what you love with your life. That's what God's ultimate desire for you to do is. His ultimate desire is for you to glorify Him and enjoy Him and serve Him in doing what you love to do. And Because here's the thing, God has made you specifically as to be who you are. So figure out who you are in Christ. Two, he's given you specific gifts and specific talents and specific likes, number three. And so once all those things converge in doing what you love, and here's the beauty of it all, if you are freed from having to define your success by worldly things and about making money or by developing a certain fame and fortune, if you're freed from that and realize that your ultimate reward is eternal, then you're free to do what you love. You're free to do what you want to do to bring glory to God and to use your gifts and your talents for His purposes. And this is where Erskine comes into the to the mix because Erskine, like any other college, is going to be a training ground. It's going to prepare you for your future and where you can do what you love to do. And so as you make your choices in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead to determine where you want to go to college or what kind of training you want to have to do what God has called you to do, then consider Erskine and consider somewhere like Erskine that one is going to encourage you in your faith in Christ, help you develop in your relationship with Him so that you learn to to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God, and also train you to use the gifts 
that God has given you to fulfill his purpose in your life. So therefore you can bring glory to his name both now and forevermore and enjoy your relationship with him to the ends of eternity. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for being with us. Hey y'all and welcome to our virtual ARP day. We are so excited that you're here. I'm Ramsey Connor and I just graduated from Erskine College this past May in 2020. I majored in early childhood education and minored in Bible and religion, and I've come back to Due West to serve as the RUF intern and the admissions intern for this school year. My name is David Pendergrass. I graduated in 2012 with a degree in biblical studies and a minor in political science. I also came back uh, this past year in September. I am so glad to be back home. It's, it's an awesome opportunity. Rams and I both actually grew up ARP, and so it is an awesome, awesome chance to have to come and work at the ARP institution. We are in Watkins Student Center, which is actually one of the biggest buildings on campus. There are a lot of moving parts to this building. Right now we're in the quiet room, which is where students come to study. Um, and it's usually a super quiet environment. Um, but there's some other things in this building that we need to point out. The chaplain's office is right down the hallway here. And also the Right Here Center, which is an awesome free resource for students to use on campus. If you have a paper for any class of any subject, you can bring it here. And people who are really good at editing papers and at grammar will help you with that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, usually professors actually give you extra credit um, if you do bring it here. As we go through Watkins, we will also pass the TV room, which is another popular study area for students to go to. One of the other big things that Watkins offers is the student development offices. They're upstairs. You can go and learn more about residence life. You can learn more about career development. Uh, there's going to be offices for different student organizations as well. So Watkins truly is a hub for students here at Erskine. We are now in Watkins in the Hangout Center right by Snappers in Java. This is a great place to meet with friends, get dinner, uh, play ping pong, pool. You can also go to the Erskine bookstore to get some Erskine swag or you can go check your CPO box and see if you've got any mail from family or friends back home. It's just a great place to build community, to hang out on weekends or after classes, and is one of my favorite spots on campus. Hey guys, welcome to Belk. So this is one of our main administrative offices on campus and it's located right beside the mall. So when you come into Belk, you'll find lots of different offices here. One of those being the business office. And so this is where you can help get all of your bills taken care of, whatever you need there. And they're super helpful in there. Another office that you'll find here is financial aid, which is right beside us. And they will also help with any problems or questions you have about your um, financial aid package or anything like that. Another office on campus is the registrar. And so there you'll get to go in and they'll help you decide on what courses to take each semester, help you decide what classes you need for your major. Um, and they're very beneficial to you throughout your four years here. One of the most important offices for you guys is the admissions office. So there, when you apply for Erskine, you'll be paired with an admissions counselor who will guide you and help you. Um, and they are so great and so helpful. And you can also register for a visit if you have not yet. Um, and one of these people that you might see on the video will come um, give you your tour. Another thing that you'll find in Belk is classrooms downstairs and upstairs. Some of the classes that you might have in Belk is history, philosophy, logic, English, and Bible classes. And what's helpful is some of the Bible and English professors' offices are in the same building. Hey, so I was just about to grab some food here at Moffat Dining Hall. This is our only dining hall on campus. And the reason I love Moffat is there are many different options here that you can eat and pick and choose from. We have the Mongolian Grill, which is fairly new, where you can pick a meat, vegetables, and they cook those right in front of you, and then you can get rice and noodles along with that. We also have a burger station where you can get regular burgers, turkey burgers, you can get fries, and you can get grilled cheese, and sometimes they'll have fried chicken patties there as well. We also have a comfort food section, which serves different foods each day and eat at each meal. We have a deli section where you can get your own sandwich and the chips and those kind of things. And we also have a pizza station, which they've just revamped with a new specialty pizza option that they have every meal and differently. And then we also have a salad bar. And so those are the different options that you have in Moffitt in our dining hall on campus. And every time you come into Moffitt, you scan your meal card. And so with your meal card, there are different options that you can choose from to have. We have an all access meal plan, which you can come to Moffitt at just about any time throughout the day. And you get $100 declining balance that you can spend in other places around campus that I'm sure you'll get to know. And then we also have a 15 meal plan along with a $225 declining balance and then a 10 meal plan with a $400 declining balance on your card. 
So welcome to Daniel Moultrie Science Center, which we call DMSC. So this is our science building. Um, it has different biology classes, chemistry classes, physics classes, and then one astronomy class. So I'm a biology major here, and we're in a botany lab, um, which has been one of my favorite classes that I've taken at Erskine. It's called field botany, um, and it's with Dr. Haldman. And so we walk around with her around due west, and she shows us the different plants um, that are native to due west and that she's planted here, which is just really fun. Um, so another benefit that you get as a biology major at Erskine is you have really close relationships with all of your professors. My mentor and advisor, his name is Dr. Mina, and he has been really helpful to me in um, finding different shadowing opportunities for different doctors in Greenville, which is where I'm from, and writing different recommendation letters um, for after I graduate going on to a graduate program. Um, so that's just a benefit of going to a small Christian college. Um, also, at Erskine, since it is a Christian college, one of my favorite parts and one of the reasons that I came to Erskine was that all of the classes are taught from a Christian perspective. So they bring Bible and their own faith into the classroom. We are actually on Pedestrian Highway, which is the connector road between the circle, which is most likely where your dorm will be, and the mall, which is most likely where most of your classes will be. Right. It's really great because cars are not allowed on this road, so it's just students and just people walking. Mm -hmm. But what's really cool about Pedestrian Highway is that you will probably see a lot of your friends because this is the only way to get to classes. That's right. <laughs> the other nice thing about Pedestrian Highway is that it's flanked on both sides by buildings and houses, and so a lot of times your professors, faculty members, that's where they live. So that whole relational aspect of Erskine is really brought home here on Pedestrian Highway. Hey everyone, we're outside of Bonner Hall. This is one of the many guys dorms on campus. We've also got Kennedy Hall, Greer Hall, Presley Hall, and McQuiston Hall. Uh, and the beautiful thing about Bonner is that it is actually on the circle with a lot of uh, dorms. There's female and guys dorms uh, on the side of campus. And so we have this great area. It's really beautiful outside here. Um, there's also just a lot of um, opportunities to really meet people because there's always people walking through here. Um, you're always seeing someone you know. Um, so it's a great side of campus to live on. Uh, Bonner has a few pluses to it. Uh, we are the only dorm on campus that has an elevator. So you don't have to walk upstairs. And we also have uh, suite bathrooms. So you don't have to share a hall bathroom with a bunch of people. Uh, so it's really great um, to live in Bonner. Uh, I'm also an RA, which is a resident assistant in Bonner Hall. Uh, this is my second year doing that, and it is a great opportunity to build um, community with people. Uh, it's a great opportunity to serve others on campus. Uh, I've met a lot of really good friends uh, doing the RA job here, uh, both students and other RAs. So it is just a great opportunity to get involved here, to be a leader on campus, and to have great community. Welcome to the Robinson Lobby. This is the upperclassmen women's dormitory. It is on the circle, which has four dormitories. Um, there is the males um, and then two females. This is the only upperclassmen women's dormitory. And then there is Carnegie, which is all freshman women. Um, I am an RA in this dormitory on the third floor. As an RA, we have a desire to create community and create love on the residents here. So each RA is given a floor and we just, each, night we go and just seek out our residents and we ask them how they are doing and we just are here to support them and love on them and we create events for us to find community in and just to have fun together um, and ultimately as as res life and our rays we seek to show christ's love to our residents um, and here at erskine we are a christ-centered school and so as res life we have a desire to promote that and to show that in a very real way as we all live together and just do life together on, in the dormitories. Um, as a freshman, when I was in Carnegie, I had a great relationship with my RA on my hall. Um, and it was just really beautiful to have them there, to be always, to have them at our back and just know that they were there to support us and love us. Um, and in Carnegie, something that I really appreciated was the fact that all of us besides the RAs were freshmen. And so we were new to the whole thing of college and we were just doing it together and kind of struggling, but it was just wonderful because we were all in it together. And that's just the unique aspect of having all the freshmen together while still having the RAs to support us and lead us as we go through this. Hey guys. 
As a liberal arts institution, you will get the opportunity to take classes outside of your own major. So we're here at the Moss facility and you will take all of your math classes in this building. Something that's really cool about the math department is that all of the professors here are super involved in the students' lives. Um, they stay extra late hours to help with students. And then we also have some professors that teach other classes besides math classes. One of our math professors actually teaches judo on campus, which is a really cool class that you can take. If you graduate from Erskine with a degree in math, you can get involved with the business world, finance, information technology, and many more. One really cool opportunity that you can have at Erskine College is our dual enrollment program with Clemson University in actuarial science. So right now, Rams and I are here in Memorial Hall. This is the concert hall for the music department. Um, if you want to, if you have a passion for music, you can come here and you can study to perform or you can study to do music theory. One of my favorite parts about being at Erskine was I was involved with the Corlears. So the Corlears are one of our three choir groups that we have here on campus, and you can join a choir group without being a music major or minor and just being a general student, which is an awesome opportunity. Mm -hmm. But we have three choir groups here on campus. We have Bella Voce, which is our women's only choir. We have Corlears, which is our more generalized choir, with, which is co-ed. And then we have our chamber singers, which is our elite choir group. Some cool opportunities for being in these choir groups is that you get to put on different performances at Erskine College for different audiences, and you also get to travel um, and put on concerts in different parts of the area, but also we go abroad sometimes, which is a great opportunity. And if you're not a singer, we also do have what's called Symphonia. Symphonia is a uh, mixed kind of orchestral group. We also do have a pet band and we have a jazz band. Um, and honestly, even if you don't want to be in any of these groups, we can get you in vocal or music lessons. So you can take guitar lessons, you could take really any kind of instrument you like. We can find you a specialist to help you with that. I know I speak for Ramsey and myself when I say my time in the music department as a choralier um, in the chamber choir, being able to sing and use the voice that God gave me to glorify him really are some of my best times as I look back uh, when I was an Erskine student. Hi, my name is Joshua Childs, affectionately known as PJC. I get the honor and the opportunity to serve here at Erskine College as the campus chaplain. I get the opportunity to oversee our campus ministries as well as our chapel services. We have chapel every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 o'clock and our chapel services are totally amazing. One word that we had this year with our campus ministries and with our chapel is the word unity. And you're going to find that in all of our ministries. You're going to find that in every chapel service. You're asking, what do you mean by that, PJC? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Because when you come in our chapel service, one of the first things that you're going to find is how we unite in purpose. It's a scripture in Acts 1 and 4. It's where they were eating and Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait on me. They were waiting in that upper room because they all had a specific purpose. We believe that when you come to chapel, matter of fact, when you come to Erskine College, that you have a purpose. One of our jobs uh, uh, through overseeing our campus ministries, one of our jobs in chapel is not to put you in a position, but to put you in purpose. And so when you come to the chapel service, you're going to get purpose poured into you by some amazing speakers. Not only are you going to feel the purpose, but you're also going to see prayer. One thing that we're really big on here is praying not just alone, but together. And so we unite as campus ministries. We unite as chaplains or as when we're in chapel uh, to be able to pray together. And then, of course, I got to tell you this. In chapel, you're going to walk away strengthened. So I gave you that you're going to be united in purpose. You're going to be united in prayer, but you're also going to be united in power. We believe that when you come to chapel, you should not leave the same. And so we have speakers that are going to speak into your life to give you the power that you need to get through that next day, to get through that next week, to get through that next month. And of course, with power comes performance. If you go back to Acts 2, when they were in the upper room together, when they were all united in the service together, it says that they begin to speak that all of those people, all of those nationalities, we have people from all different type of places, all different type of walks, all different type of races, all different type of ethnicities. You come to get empowered to be able to perform 
the will of God, to be able to form, perform what it is that God is called to do in your life. So I've just given you the four P's of campus ministry, just giving you the four P's of chapel. I believe that God is going to pour out these four P's in your life. I believe that you're gonna experience a level of purpose. I believe that you're gonna experience a level of prayer. I believe that you're gonna experience a, 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 a level of power. And I believe that you're gonna experience a level of performance. Listen, that Acts 2 narrative, God sent them for a reason. I believe that in this next season that God is going to send you to a certain place uh, for a reason to get the prayer that you need, to get the purpose that you need, to get the power that you need, to get the performance that you need. My prayer is that Erskine College is that place. And so I'm going to be praying that God will give you and direct you and guide you to the place that will not only help you for the next year, but for the rest of your life. Consider Erskine College. I believe that it's a place that will totally transform your life. God bless. My name is Mary Pratt. I am the Student Christian Association President, um, which is the head of the campus ministries here at Erskine College. Right now we are standing on the steps of Bowie Art Center overlooking the mall. Um, and I'm just here to tell you a little bit about our campus ministries. Um, so SCA exists to um, unite the campus ministries and their efforts. Uh, we work closely with the campus chaplain um, and his uh, ministry that he does on campus as well. We have several campus ministry opportunities um, in different groups for people to get involved in. Um, one of them is BCM, which is the Baptist Collegiate Ministries. They meet once a week. Um, it is held by a local Baptist minister and they invite local Baptist ministers to speak each week. This is a smaller um, group setting for people to be involved in and um, it's a really great opportunity to learn more um, about um, God and what he is doing in our lives. We also have FCA, which is the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. It is a student-led campus ministry and it is a more contemporary style of worship. They meet every other week in the hangar, um, which is the bottom floor of the Erskine building. Um, this is, as I said, a contemporary style of worship. They meet every other week and on their off weeks, they usually do some kind of um, activity like kickball or cornhole or something fun just to get people out of the dorm and involved on campus. Um, and we also have another campus ministry called RUF, which is the Reformed University Fellowship. They actually meet off campus um, at a local minister's barn, which is about six minutes away. They have weekly large groups on Sundays, and then they also have um, several Bible study opportunities um, throughout the week. And then the last ministry is SCA. Um, SCA is the organizational and administrative head of ministries, but we also exist as a ministry ourselves. We meet once a week on Watkins porch um, for the simple time of fellowship, just to um, get to know our students and get to know people who need to get connected with campus ministries. Um, we offer several opportunities for them to learn more about Christ on this campus. Um, each one of these ministries has made a huge impact on my life and I've gotten to know several um, really good friends through these ministries and um, through their friendships my faith has been strengthened and I have learned a ton about how to pursue um, ministry and making sure that my mindset is on growing the kingdom of God first before anything else. Um, it has been a really great opportunity to be a part of campus ministries, and I highly recommend getting involved um, in them while at Erskine or at any college campus. Um, I also work closely with Josh Childs, who is our interim campus chaplain. He and I have been working to um, make sure that there is a sense of unity on campus with um, all of our campus ministries and our sports teams and um, just different groups on campus, making sure that there's a sense of unity. And one of the things that we did most recently was we had a One Kingdom, uh, or One Campus, One Kingdom service, uh, which was held this past Sunday um, here, like exactly where we're standing. Um, and it was a great opportunity for um, people to get involved with campus ministry, but also with local churches. Hey guys, we're out here in front of Reed Hall. Reed Hall is the business department here at Erskine College. I'm a business major, and so I've spent many of my classes here at Reed Hall. Reed Hall is pretty small, along with the business department, so I know many of the professors and have a personal relationship with them. Um, many of my fellow classmates I know from being in the business department. 
Here at Erskine, the professors are very invested into the students, and I know many of the professors have been able to go over to their house for lunch or for dinner and uh, build relationships with them and get to know them better. One thing specific about the business department is the business department is very focused on really helping you to make that next step into getting a job. And so many of the, many of the people in the business department have jobs in the real world. And so they're able to give you connections with other people um, and with other employees to help you kind of make that next step as you leave college. Hey guys, I'm standing in one of the more beautiful places on campus, in my opinion, the leaves are falling and standing under the towers, which is where graduation um, will happen for me and you know, maybe for you. But I'm not supposed to be giving you a tour of just the general area. My job is to tell you about the library. Um, McCain Library is over my shoulder and it's just been a consistent place to study and to find resources. There's a reliably helpful resource center in there. Um, the librarians are known for being helpful. Welcome back everybody. We are now standing underneath the Erskine building, the towers, those things you see on a number of our marketing materials you see on my shirt here. The Erskine Towers is kind of like the most iconic aspect of Erskine's campus. Uh, in this building, you actually will take psychology classes, sociology classes, you'll take history, you'll take education. You might have convocation credit, or you might watch a play here. Uh, the Erskine building is truly one of the biggest parts of your, your Erskine experience here. Something really awesome about Erskine College is that we have a lot of traditions. And one of the best traditions at Erskine is that after your four years here, this is exactly where you will graduate, under these beautiful towers. Yeah, that's something I look back on when I graduated as just such an awesome experience to be able to see all my friends, you know, walk on the stage, seeing your family and, and loved ones out there. It's something that I'll never forget. But the other big thing that we are just excited about here at Erskine, we have literary societies. So these two oldest buildings on campus are where you come, if you get in, you get inducted in, you have a brotherhood, you have a sisterhood of these people that will be a part of your life, honestly, for the rest of your life. We've done debates. We have just this opportunity to grow and, and fellowship together. And I look back on those guys I got to know as the, the Yuffies. They are people I will know and they'll be my brothers for the rest of my life. Another one of Erskine's greatest traditions are our secret societies. They exist solely for the purpose of bringing fun to campus. So while you're here at Erskine over your four years, you may be asked to be in a secret society. Not everyone is, but you get inducted in and then you um, exist to help bring fun to the campus. Mm -hmm. And that looks like bringing pranks on our <laughs> campus. While I was here at Erskine, I was actually a jester. I was not asked to be in a secret society, but honestly, I had so many other things that I look back at for my Erskine experience that I just loved every every minute of it. So it's okay. You get, like she said, you get to enjoy those times that the pranks happen. Um, but that's definitely something that's unique to Erskine's campus. Hey y'all, we are here at Mama's Sweet Shop, which is just right off campus. Um, it's a new hot spot for Erskine students to come and to get donuts, coffee, and a really good lunch. I mean, it's really nice if you want to get off campus, but not too far away. Um, but we are here with Casey McNair, who's the Director of Admissions, and she's going to talk to us a little bit more about how to apply. Hey guys, I'm so glad that you guys have gotten the chance to walk around Due West with us today. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about how you can learn more about Erskine. So if you go to connect.erskine.edu, you can learn everything you possibly want to know about Erskine that you haven't heard already today. Um, you can learn more about financial aid and you can also sign up for our mailing list to learn even more about Erskine throughout the next few weeks and months. Um, if you're a senior and you'd like to go ahead and apply to Erskine, you can do so on that same web page. And since you've been on a tour with us today, you can use the waiver code ARP Tour to waive the application fee at the end of your application. Once we get your application in, we'll be happy to get you in touch with your personal admissions counselor to walk you through the rest of the application process and help you answer any other questions you have about Erskine today. As an ARP student, you have access to a really awesome scholarship. It's called the ARP Scholarship. You'll actually get $5,000 towards your time here at Erskine. In addition to that, we do have what's called a church matching grant, where your church can donate so much money, and Erskine will match it up to $1,500. And then today, don't forget that when you signed up to be a part of this virtual ARP day, there actually were some incentives involved. If you're one of the winners, it'll be selected here in just a few minutes. We'll email you in the next week or two. Keep an eye out for that email. We are so excited that you were able to join us on our tour today to find out more about your denomination school. Remember that you can visit erskine.edu 
to sign up for an in-person tour or to apply if you're ready. We are so glad that you had the opportunity to join us today and to find out more about Erskine College.